During the mid to late 70s, Happy Days was the king of all situation comedies, and it was one of my favorite shows on TV. You know, the 50s were only 20 years removed back then from present day, but to me, life with the Cunningham family seemed like a completely different world. I think this TV guide ad for the very first episode said it best. The 50s were filled with innocence and the promise of even better days to come. Well, better days for at least most of the Cunningham family because something very odd and very unfortunate happened to the eldest member of the clan. Simply put, for lack of any better way of saying it, Chuck Cunningham simply disappeared. And let me just state for the record that this is an even bigger tragedy for me because I am a huge fan of most Chucks. In particular, the two pictured alongside Chuck Cunningham here. Charlie Brown and Chuck Norris both played a very formative role in my life as I identified with the lovable loser that was Charlie Brown, and I idolized the symbol of unattainable strength and overall manliness that was Chuck Norris. So anyway, getting back to Happy Days, as much as I loved the Cunningham family, I idolized the Fonz. Well, for at least the first few seasons. I really thought he was about as cool as you could get. He passed the TV Guide and Dynamite magazine test as he was on the cover at least twice for both magazines, actually with TV Guide many more times. But it turns out that the Fonz was actually responsible in a weird kind of way for Big Brother Chuck's disappearance. You see, as the show developed and the writers started really exploring the relationship dynamics between the characters, it became clear to all that the Fonz could become something of a pseudo big brother to Richie Cunningham. All that was getting in the way was the real big brother, who never really had much to do in any of the plot lines anyway. Actor Gavin O'Herlihy saw the writing on the wall midway through the first season and asked to be let out of his contract. And it wasn't a bad decision by O'Herlihy, although Wikipedia says that he is best known as Chuck Cunningham. The actor has had a great career with roles in films like Superman 3, Never Say Never Again, as well as Ron Howard's Willow. He was also part of the cast of the highly acclaimed TV miniseries, Lonesome Dove. And in the 80s, he moved to England where he was cast in a successful TV series called We'll Meet Again. While there, O'Hurley, he made the decision to stay in the UK, where he has lived for almost 40 years. But O'Hurley, he isn't the only actor to have played Chuck Cunningham. During season two, Chuck made two more appearances before finally disappearing for good. And in those two episodes, Chuck was played by Randolph Roberts. Roberts' appearances were limited to the episodes Richie Moves Out and Guess Who's Coming to Christmas. Personally, nothing against Randolph, but Gavin will always be the real Chuck Cunningham to me. He's the guy I think of when I hear the term Chuck Cunningham Syndrome. Yep, that's a real term. Just look it up. It's used when a TV show pretends that a family member never existed as time goes on. Getting back to Randolph, he didn't work in the entertainment industry all that long, really. Ultimately, he ended up becoming an education supervisor at ITT Technical Institute. Talk about a change of careers. But before he left Hollywood for good, he did land at the leading role in a film called Wicked Wicked, and most importantly, a smaller but not insignificant role in the sci-fi classic Logan's Run. So that's it. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think. Did you miss Chuck Cunningham? Apparently not that many people did. Stupid Fonzie, I blame him. Of course, if we didn't have the Fonz, we would never have been introduced to Pinky Tuscadero. So all is forgiven, Arthur Fonzarelli. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments section, and while you're at it, please click on the thumbs up and subscribe buttons. I talk about music, movies, and television on my channel, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.